So we've been traveling Southeast Asia for about seven months now. And one of the questions that we always get asked is how much it actually costs for us to travel full time. So in this video, we're going to expose our entire monthly budget for full time travel. So in the past seven months, we've traveled to so many great places uh, in Indonesia and Thailand. We're actually heading to Vietnam in two days uh, for a month long trip. And when we left Australia, we never really would have guessed that we would have been able to go to so many great places in such a short amount of time. When we left Australia, we didn't have a whole lot of money, uh, but we knew if we stuck to a budget, we'd be able to travel for a lot longer. So we are digital nomads and we do make an online income, but we don't really rely on that because it's not exactly steady. So because of that, when we started traveling, we decided to travel to more cheaper countries uh, to start off with. So Bali was more of an affordable destination for us to get started on our travels. Yeah, Bali is a very cheap destination to travel if you want it to be. You can actually spend a lot of money in Bali if you don't really know where to stay or what places to go, how to get cheap accommodation and that sort of thing. Yeah, we definitely made some mistakes when we first got there. Uh, it did take a bit of time for us to sort of work out how to stay on budget. One of the biggest things for us was figuring out cheap places to eat, um, how to get cheaper accommodation and things like that. So how much do we actually spend while traveling full time? To give you a better idea, we're going to break it down into categories. Accommodation, food, travel, insurance, health, and phone or internet. So probably the most important expense, but actually believe it or not, it's not our most expensive one, is accommodation. Because we are in a really cheap part of the world in Southeast Asia, and maybe COVID has a little bit to do with it, accommodation's actually really cheap here. It really depends on how fussy you are. You definitely get what you pay for, but we found that some of the places we've stayed in have been nicer than anywhere we've ever really lived. Yeah, <laughs> and much bigger too. <laughs> yeah. So as a general rule, and I'm speaking in Australian dollars here, we tend to go for anything around $30 or less per night for accommodation. So that works out to be about 900 Australian dollars per month. Uh, and that gets us more than enough. If you're someone who can't go without certain luxuries, maybe that wouldn't be ideal for you. And it's definitely hit and miss. We've yeah. stayed in a couple of places that weren't really doable for us and we did check out the next day. But in general, I'd say most of the time we can find something pretty good for that budget. Yeah, for sure. Like the, currently the place that we're in at the moment has a bath, it has a gym, big bed, lots of space in here, enough like there's a couch here for us to film on. Um, there's a pool. It's got everything you need, like I'm super happy here. So this sort of is like the higher end, nice ones that we've found, but you can definitely find places that have everything that you need like this. Yeah, and that's a real bonus having like a pool and a gym. Some of them don't, but often they do. So we find that it has everything we need and there's always good Wi-Fi. Yeah, for sure. And really good service. The people that work here are really good. <laughs> Our second expense and another important one is food. Yeah, the best one. <laughs> um, it probably doesn't always go to plan. We generally try to budget for the same amount, which is about 30 Australian dollars a day for food, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in Southeast Asia, you'd be surprised what you can get for that amount. Yeah, as long as you stick to eating local food pretty much wherever you go, seems to be really easy to hit that budget. Yeah, it, it can vary a little bit, but in general, um, one person should be able to eat for $5 a meal and eat pretty well too. Yeah, yeah, with a drink and food, really nice meal. Yeah, we might spend a bit more on dinner um, most days than we do for say breakfast and lunch, and that's because breakfast we can get like a mango sticky rice or a smoothie or something for like a couple of dollars, uh, which gives us a bit more to spend for lunch and dinner. Yeah. We also tend to sometimes go for hotels that give us uh, a free breakfast, which you will pay a little bit extra for, but it works out to be really cheap. And it just makes traveling so much easier when you have breakfast at your hotel. You don't have to go and uh, find another meal. Some people probably 
do intermittent fasting and actually skip breakfast. So yeah. it's going to be even cheaper. For yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thirty dollars a day for food, uh, more than enough. Like just last night, we went out and we got a, a meal each and a couple of drinks each, and the total bill was like twelve dollars Australian. Uh, that doesn't take into account like if you're going to be drinking a lot of alcohol or going out, you'd probably have to add that to your budget if that's something you want to do. Yeah, we have the odd beer here and there. Like as if you're drinking like a local, again, local drinks, um, spirits are quite expensive here, but if you're drinking, yeah, a local beer, it's just as affordable as getting a soft drink. So our next expense is insurance. And this is just something that we factor in every month, pretty much because right at the start of our trip, we had to use our insurance when we both got dengue fever. Um, if you've watched any of our videos or our content, you would know that we use Safety Wing. The reason we use Safety Wing is that pretty reasonably priced. Uh, it works out to be about $120 per month for the two of us. Um, that covers us for everything from delayed flights, service interruptions, uh, getting sick, going to hospital, accidents. Uh, it even covers you for COVID, which a lot of the companies don't do anymore. And it's really straightforward to use, actually. You just renew it every month and then it starts again. It's almost like a Netflix subscription. Because we've had to use them already and they did pay us out straight away, we find them to be really good. Yeah. Right, so our next expense, um, obviously we're digital nomads, so we move around a lot, and so that would be travel. So that really includes things like flights, uh, buses, boats. We just took a couple of boats um, to Koh Samui and Copenhagen. They're reasonably cheap, like you can get buses pretty much anywhere for under $10 uh, in Southeast Asia. Boat, a little bit more expensive, but there's always a cheaper option. Like if you want to get a speed boat, that's going to cost you more. But if you get a ferry or a slower boat, that's going to be a cheaper option for you. Our budget for that is roughly $150 a week or $600 a month. That gets us enough. I mean, we don't move around that much. We probably stay in the one place for at least four or five days. And also included in that would be visa costs, which we haven't found to be too expensive. Um, there's a lot of places you can travel with an Australian and Canadian passport where you actually don't need a visa to go to, like Thailand. But yeah, $150 a week or 600 a month, that includes flights, buses, taxis, everything like that. That's more than enough for us. Uh, so another main expense for us is phones, or I guess internet data. When you're traveling, um, although you can use Wi-Fi in most places, you definitely need data, especially when you're getting to a new country. And that's because pretty much you just need to know how to get around. You need to use Google Maps, uh, whatever transport service you're using in the country, like Uber or Grab. Google Translate as well is really handy to use. And yeah, we find that no matter where we are, we always like to have data, at least a little bit. If you watch one of our previous videos, we recently just discovered eSIMs and we use Olify for eSIMs. It costs about $74 a month for the two of us and that gets us eight gig of data each, uh, which is more than enough because we do most of our work from either a hotel room or we go to other places like restaurants or cafes, co-working places to do work. So we're really not using our phone data for that much, but it's just enough for us to always make sure that our phones do have data on them. Yeah. Which brings us to today's sponsor of this video, which is Surfshark. Mandy, do you know what a VPN is? A virtual private network? Yes. Right. A VPN or a virtual private network basically keeps you safe by covering up everything that you do online. It's kind of like wearing a mask while you're using the internet. So when your phone or your laptop connects to the internet, all of your information is encrypted. So why is that important to us? Like we said, we use a lot of public Wi-Fi, like at restaurants, at cafes, bars, that type of thing. Uh, and it helps just keep all your personal information safe, which is super important, especially when you're traveling, don't want anyone seeing what you're up to on your computer, especially if you have like online banking or anything like that on it, it's super important to keep that private. Yeah, that's probably honestly the biggest one. Yeah. Like we sign on to our online banking from airports, cafes, like hotels, like here. We've actually had an issue with getting our 
bank accounts hacked before so this is a huge one for us yeah it just gives you that extra peace of mind just knowing <laughs> you're not gonna log on to your banking one day and find all your money gone yep. <laughs> aside from just offering additional security Surfshark's also great if um, you're overseas and you want to access your Netflix subscription. Um, usually it'll register to the, whatever country that you're in, uh, but a VPN allows you to access Netflix from any country. So you're allowed to set it to US, you can access US Netflix, or if you want to go back to your home country and use that Netflix, you're able to do that as well. Yeah, I think, do you remember when we first came to Bali and I think we were halfway through season four of Ozark and we realized we couldn't watch it in Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, luckily we were able to use a VPN and log on and pretend we're like we were still in Australia. Yes. And keep binge watching it. <laughs> yeah. So if you sign up to Surfshark today using our code Lloyd and Mandy, you'll receive 83% off and three extra months free plus free antivirus. We'll leave the link below in the description if you're interested in joining Surfshark. Yeah, and if you've never used a VPN before and you want to check out Surfshark, click the link and check them out. It's actually risk-free because they do a 30-day money-back guarantee. So the last expense of ours, which we tend to prioritize above almost everything else is our health. It's a pretty broad expense. A lot of things go into this, but to give you an idea what we mean by health is things like gym access. Mandy does a lot of yoga. Actually, we both do from <laughs> time to time. Things like maybe vitamins, um, shampoo, uh, massages, just necessities like toothpaste and things like that as well. We prefer to prioritize these things over certain other things like maybe going out. Um, or the nicer hotel, we'd rather be able to take care of ourselves in that way, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, we like to make sure that we have enough money in our budget to take care of our health because we do a lot of work while we're on the road. Like, It may seem like we're just traveling around uh, having fun all the time, but a lot of our time is actually working and if we're not sleeping well or not feeling good, uh, we don't really get much done. We're not very productive and yeah, it really really sacrifices our work when we're not feeling healthy Yeah, so we tend to prioritize health above just about everything else and our budget for that for the month is about $90 a week so $360 uh, per month. We do try to stay in hotels as well that have gym access which just makes it a lot easier like the place that we're currently at but um, we found it quite difficult to find that in Bali but in Thailand it's been very easy we'll see what Vietnam and the other countries are like um, but in our price range in Bali we found it quite difficult to find somewhere with a gym um, so we were also paying that expense on top of our living expenses but here has been a lot easier. Yeah, so if we do stay somewhere with a gym, that's obviously a bonus and we yeah. don't have to spend really as much money for health that week. I do recommend it if you're wanting to do this nomad life. For me, I've found that being like sort of a grounding thing, like knowing that there is a gym wherever we're staying and really the only routine I've been able to get myself in because every day is sort of so different with us moving around so much. Having the gym just seems to be like a good, <laughs> the only solid thing that we really have for every day. <laughs> yeah, and if you've ever been to Thailand and had a traditional Thai massage, oh. I'd definitely, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't had one, I'd recommend getting one because yeah. um, it's almost like doing yoga and the gym and, and getting a massage all in one. Yeah. Like we just got one today and it feels amazing. Yeah, we're hooked. <laughs> so when you add all of those expenses up, uh, it comes to just under $3,000 Australian per month. That's sort of the cheapest budget we can do while still being relatively comfortable. Yeah, so we are minimalists and in pursuing this digital nomad traveler's life, we've learned to sort of go without a lot of luxuries and little things that we used to have in our previous stagnant life. And that sort of just helped us stay on budget. We've just really prioritized traveling and keeping this lifestyle going. So it's sort of been like a learning experience of how to go without certain luxuries. Your money can actually go a lot further than what you'd expect if you have a budget. We just find that having a budget keeps us comfortable and happy and we only spend as much as we need to spend each month. If travel is your big goal or what you're aspiring to do in life, it might be a good idea to sort of take a step back and 
sort of pick apart your budget currently and see maybe where you can trim off some things or be a little bit more minimalist and maybe see if there's some places that you're spending more than necessary because you might find that if, if you didn't spend money on those things, you might actually be able to afford to travel. We really hope you guys have found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as we are constantly uploading helpful and entertaining travel videos for you. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.